and welcome to the Five Minute Film Club. And uh, I've got my eggnog ready. Have you? Right, I'm actually going to drink this. And this is my first time drinking eggnog. It's very thick. I'm very sorry if this goes over five minutes. I'm not going to die drinking this, am I? So, hear that lovely slushy goodness? Okay, uh, let's have a little pour of this. Oh, yeah, that looked nice. Wow. Good grief. Okay, ready? It's like alcoholic custard. Uh, so, anyway. Today's film will be Home Alone, a film that I'm sure many of you have watched every Christmas since its release 30 years ago. Home Alone is that perennial Christmas classic that made a huge, 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 one more time, huge star out of Macaulay Culkin as the boy Kevin McAllister left home alone when his parents go on holiday. While he's there, for all the people living under a rock who have never actually seen this film, two burglars played by Joe Pesci and Daniel Stern attack the house, leaving little Kevin to defend himself in ever resourceful and destructive ways. Home Alone is one of those films that, for people my age, have grown up with. And I think it symbolises Christmas as a big, showy affair with lots of presents and you know, those warm, fuzzy, sentimental feelings. Written by John Hughes of The Breakfast Club and various other hit American teen films of the 1980s, that warmth is something that is always plentiful in his films. His use of quick, snappy, witty dialogue transfers perfectly from those teen films to young Kevin, and Macaulay is a true star. Despite its very glossy look, this film comes from particularly modest beginnings. It was originally set as a Warner Brothers film with an incredibly small feature film budget, but quickly was dropped and picked up by 20th Century Fox before production started, as they knew, inevitably, it would go over budget. In fact, all the way through the filming of this, um, budget just kept being brought up and yeah, it did creep up. It originally started at 10 million and ended up at 18 million, I think, but every corner that could be cut was. And so director Christopher Columbus, who would later go on to direct the initial run of um, Harry Potter films, um, had to come up with ever increasingly resourceful ways, like Kevin himself, to actually make this film. They got somebody to do the video effects for the film. There isn't many, but it was basically done by somebody in their mother's basement just round the corner. And then they had to tackle filming with the child star who could only be on set for a few hours at a time. One scene that had to be trimmed down is when the furnace comes to life to scare Kevin. And originally Christopher Columbus had this idea that it would grow legs and chase Kevin across the basement. But, you know, obviously it just ended up with two prop hands, you know, and a bit of fishing wire opening up and a light bulb going on. But, you know, those kind of like rudimentary film techniques, I think, really work in this film. It, it does have a feeling of being very homemade with this kind of Hollywood gloss over it that, uh, yeah, it's masquerading as something much bigger. And yeah, I, I really like that about films. And also the wonderful score by John Williams. He was brought in really at the 11th hour. It was meant to be somebody else. And in fact, on the original poster of the film, he's even credited as being the composer of this film, but he was caught up on another project. Um, I think it was Rescuers Down Under or something. And so Christopher Columbus got hold of Spielberg to get hold of John Williams and he rushed in and created I think a fantastic score that uh, John Williams's music anyway is just brilliant and it really fits the feeling of this film and you can't you can't now separate the two. However, there was a little bit of frostiness on the set, particularly from the adult stars to the young Macaulay Culkin who was definitely flavor of the month. And you've got people like Joe Pesci who, you know, just before he started filming on this he had won the Oscar for Goodfellas. And so I think he thought this as being a bit of a step down to make this kids film. But what's interesting, I think, is that it doesn't feel like a kids film. It's pitched at a family audience. And I think that's probably the first time a big Hollywood film, you know, modest Hollywood film even, you know, didn't just go all kiddie friendly on its films. It, it wanted the whole family to come along and really in, take something away from it and I, I think that's one of Home Alone's biggest legacies is actually doing that. This film also features one of my favourite comedy actors and that's John Candy. He did this as a favour for John Hughes as he'd done 
Planes, Trains and Automobiles and Uncle Buck, also with Macaulay Culkin. So he only asked for $400 or whatever to film this and he had one day to do it in and he did it all in a mammoth 23 hour shoot that he essentially just riffed and ad-libbed his way around the script and John Candy from all accounts was a genuinely nice guy who always is exceptionally charming and funny and warm in every film you see him in and so it's really nice that he's in Home Alone which has become such a classic Christmas film um, so you can see him being very funny every single year and I I think that's another reason why I really enjoy Home Alone. Watching this film this time with the kind of reviewer's hat on, this is a reviewer's hat for anybody out there wondering what it looks like, and I, I think I was struck by how well this film has actually aged. It feels like it's kind of trapped in a little time bubble that's just Christmas, you know, a Christmas 90s time bubble along with the uh, Coca-Cola uh, truck advert, which actually, you know, they both employ the same kind of film language. They look very similar. This film, despite all the chat going on while they were making it between the studios about how much was being spent, it took a bundle out of the box office and ended up spawning four films, two that were direct to DVD or TV. And actually there's another one in the works now um, for Disney Plus. So, anyway, Merry Christmas everyone. Um, eggnog at the ready and cheers to you all. I hope you're able to have a good Christmas or the best one that you can possibly have given the circumstances of this year. And I would just like to say thank you very much for tuning in and watching these videos since I started in September again. Um, so before my head explodes in heat, I'll say Merry Christmas and uh, see you very soon. Cheers. Oh, that's a drink that gets worse. <laughs>